May our Lord guide this day under his grace. That's the focus from today's message using Psalm 80. And I actually switched the readings from the 21st uh, pericope or proper set to the 22nd. Given that opportunity that it just seemed to relate today uh, to things uh, uh, preparing, uh, trusting the Lord, um, wondering what's up, what's happening. So may God guide us together as we uh, search and, well, go to him, consult him, and look to his direction uh, in this time of uh, the offer of sale of property to our church. And, of course, uh, this time in each one of our lives, all these things are in his view, and uh, he welcomes us to come to him. God bless you in worship. Today is um, the 18th Sunday after Pentecost, and we are using Divine Service Setting One, Holy Communion. Our opening hymn is 549, the first three verses of All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. stand as you are able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But, but if we confess, confess our sins, sins God, who is faithful and just, us, will forgive our sins. sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. 
we justly deserve your presence and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and release us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his only Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by the authority of his word, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We continue then with the intro. You brought a vine out of Egypt. You drove out the nations and planted it. You cleared the ground for it. It took deep root and built the land. The mountains were covered with its shade. The mighty cedars with its branches. It sent out its branches to the sea. And its shoots to the river. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. You brought a vine out of Egypt. You drove out the nations and the it. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Victory. 
victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, you gave your Son into the hands of sinful men who killed him. Forgive us when we reject your unfailing love and grant us the fullness of your salvation through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Prepare to hear the word of the Lord. The Old Testament reading is the rest of the chapter of Psalm 80, and this is the base for basis for today's message. <clears throat> Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock, you who are enthroned upon the cherubim, shine forth before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh. Stir up your might and come to save us. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine that we may be saved. O Lord, God of hosts, how long will you be angry with your people's prayers? You have fed them with the bread of tears and given them tears to drink in full measure. You make us an object of contention for our neighbors, and our enemies laugh among themselves. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. You brought a vine out of Egypt. You drove out the nations and planted it. It sent out its branches to the sea and its roots, its shoots to the river. Why then have you broken down its walls so that all who pass along the way pluck its fruit? The boar from the forest ravages it and all that move in the field feed on it. Turn again, O God of hosts, look down from heaven and see. Have regard for this vine, the stock that your right hand planted, and for the son whom you made strong for yourself. They have burned it with fire, they have cut it down. May they perish at the rebuke of your face. But let your hand be on the man of your right hand, the son of man, whom you have made strong for yourself. Then we shall not turn back from you. Give us life, and we will call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Let your face shine, that we may be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. He will command his angels concerning you. To guard you in all your ways. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. The epistle reading is from Philippians chapter 3, from verse 4 through 14. If anyone else thinks he has reason for confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness, under the law, blameless. But whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss, because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish, 
in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death that by any means possible I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this, or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own. The one thing I do, Forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Worship then continues with the gospel anthem. 538, praise be to Christ. stand in honor of the Holy Gospel. Alleluia! The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Alleluia! Alleluia! Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel is according to St. Matthew, chapter 21, verses 33 through 46. Glory to you. Lord. 
Jesus said, Hear another parable. There was a master of a house who planted a vineyard and put a fence around it and dug a wine press in it and built a tower and leased it to tenants and went into another country. When the season for fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to get his fruit. And the tenants took his servants and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again he sent other servants, more than the first, and they did the same to them. Finally he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and have his inheritance. And they took him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. When, therefore, the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, He will put those wretches to a miserable death and let out the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the fruits in their seasons. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures, The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people producing its fruits. And the one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and when it falls on anyone, it will crush him. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard this parable, his parables, they perceived that he was speaking about them. And although they were seeking to arrest him, they feared the crowds because they held him to be a prophet. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Our worship then continues with the hymn of the day, 913, O Holy Spirit, enter in. Let our preaching 
and our labor. Praise you, Lord, and serve our neighbor. Almighty Rock, O Source of Life, let your dear word in doubt and strife in us be strongly burning that we be faithful unto death and live in love and holy faith from you true wisdom learning shower by your power, Christ confessing. Let us see our Savior's blessing. Today's message is entitled, O Shepherd, Give Ear and Lead Us. Like the threat of thunder, the rumble of chariots of war, the wind and dust that blows over dry land, what happens when the people face adversity? The times of freedom and opportunity of lightheartedness and capability to go and explore and do what you will, these are becoming fond memories. But now there's trouble. Life is not going so well, not as easily as it seemed in yesteryear. The humbling defeats that bring one low, these are what teach and instruct God's people they are drawn back to their God when their land and fortunes have been ransacked. Then they recall the good heritage of God's doing, of God's doing in the past. They long for what no longer is. The boar from the forest ravages the vineyard and marauders help themselves to the produce, leaving the people of God destitute. In Psalm 80, verse 13, the boar, derogatory as if to declare the pagan heathen aggressor, the Assyrians, to be no different than wild swine. They ravage and plunder Israel. The fall of Samaria is near, or even has occurred, which happened in 722 to 721 B.C. Now fire eats at their protective walls. Siege lays waste. War afflicts the people. The crops are burned. The harvest is lost. Smoke and fire consume the fruitfulness of the old vines. The people, once proud, are humbled. So goes the challenge of so many things in our lives. For our congregation, we now face an impending change to come. What will become of our place of worship? Certainly, we are in a much better place than being victims of war or fire or earthquakes, destructions. We do not face devastation of flooding. In fact, there is a new direction for expansion and development in our city. That reality is driving an offer to purchase this place where we have had the blessing of 40 years in this location. That's what it is now. Since 1983, Redeemer Lutheran Congregation has, we might say, dwelt here at 3637 Brown Road. Now come forces that have actually driven up and increased the monetary value of this plot of property. Are we being driven out? Or is this the Lord's doing 
to redirect and provide for his ministry of grace in new ways. In the times of the kings of Israel in the north and Judah to the south, the people of God were separated by their failure to hold to the Lord's commands and teaching and way of life. They had forsaken him as their God alone. They compromised their faith to blend in with their non-believing neighbors. They failed to consult the Lord first and foremost. They did not seek his direction. They did not treasure his word. The great Shema, hear, O Israel, the Lord, our God, the Lord is one, was forsaken as people chased their own interests and ambitions. Instead, more and more, they followed the way of false gods, of fertility rites, even making sacrifices to idols. The Lord, jealous and righteous, was in their rear view mirror. So he permitted them to be ravaged. The punishments and rejection of his people ultimately had his goal to draw them back in repentance to himself. So we hear this yearning theme woven into Psalm 80, a psalm of Asaph. Yearning for God has grasped their hearts. Their tears flow out as they mourn their loss. Ultimately, they realize it is the blessing of God that they have lost. They call out anew for the return of his favor. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock, you who are enthroned upon the cherubim, shine forth. Before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh, stir up your might and, and come to save us. Note these three tribal names. Ephraim and Manasseh are the tribes of the two sons of Joseph, a double portion. And Benjamin was the youngest son of Rachel. Levi was set apart as the priestly tribe to offer sacrifice and proclaim the Lord's presence and his word of atonement for the forgiveness of the sins of these chosen yet very sinful people. The Lord is the one enthroned upon the cherubim, a reference to the mercy seat of the Ark of the Covenant. He is the God who brought them out of Egypt, in fact, planted them like a vine God rooted out the, the nations around them to give them the promised land. It flourished. God's people worshipped him, and he blessed them with fruitfulness and growth and blessing as far as the Mediterranean Sea to the west and the Mesopotamian River to the east. Under the shepherd king David and son Solomon, Israel had flourished. They subjugated peoples who deferred to the truth of the Lord God, the Lord of hosts, who called out this small people to be light among the nations. The psalm continues. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine that we may be saved. The Lord's presence is likened to the warm sun. He shines forth. His countenance gives blessing, rescues, delivers, saves. That his face shines recalls Numbers 6, 24 through 26, which concludes many of our worship services. You can recite these words with me. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. So this psalmist addresses the Lord, the shepherd of Israel. O Lord, a God of hosts, how long will you be angry with your people's prayers? And he lets it all pour out. The questions, the wonderings, the disappointments, the botched up lives. 
How long will you be angry with your people's prayers? Our performances sputter. Our trust and faith rises and falls. We do not and cannot please God of ourselves. Then comes that realization like you know when you're really out of sync. We've headed down the wrong path. And now when we want to have favor with God, the feeling from within ourselves is more like, you're not hearing me, Lord. Why the silence? Well, guilt settles in too. We have an idea. We know we've neglected the Lord. We haven't called upon his name earnestly with all our heart, all our soul, all our mind, all our strength. We've chased other gods. The psalmist sees where this broken down relationship with God has gone. God has given them tears to drink in full measure. Their world has fallen apart. You make us an object of contention for our neighbors, and our enemies laugh among themselves. O oh, shepherd, give ear and lead us. This shepherd is a God who ultimately gives sacrificially to rescue his people, his sheep. A son by line of Israel blood is coming, the stock that God's right hand has planted. And God has invested himself in enduring love in this son. True God and true man, Jesus, or God, would send his Messiah, Jesus. Jesus will give his life to give us life anew. In him, we see the face of God. It is warm. It is gracious. It yearns to forgive our every sin. In Christ Jesus, God redeems us from our failed ways. He removes the curse, the laughingstock, even as he was jeered and denied and betrayed by his own. Even though we knew him not, he was faithful to us. This good shepherd gave his all. He gives ear and leads us back. He speaks forgiveness back into our ears and touches our hearts with peace and love and joy. He will not abandon you. prayer. So, gracious God, we here at Redeemer look to you also now. We ask you to guide our deliberations on your purpose in our lives together, in this time and in this place. We ask you to give us your wisdom and ask that your gracious will be done among us now in the question of sale of this property. We trust that your calling opens doors even when some doors in our lives are shut. Have mercy on us where we falter, where we forsake you. Pick us up by your word of promise. Renew our faith. Let your kingdom come. For the sake of your love in Jesus, we pray. Amen. Now I invite you to stand as we will confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven 
and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Our worship then continues with the prayer of the church. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the church, the vineyard of the Lord's planting, that by the sacrifice of Christ and the comfort of his spirit, she may yield much fruit for his kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For confidence to share in the sufferings of Jesus Christ, who died to make us his own, that we may also know the power of his resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. For all orphans, that they would be given a safe place in which to grow and thrive, and for generous couples who will give them permanent homes through adoption, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For our prime minister, our premier, and all elected and appointed leaders, for indigenous peoples in truth and reconciliation, that the light of the Lord may shine upon our nation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For strong hearts to heed the pruning law of the Lord, that we may never presume to sin, nor trust in our own deeds, but look to the rainfall of his grace for our source of life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy for zeal directed by the gospel of Christ and hands strengthened to accomplish the fruitful work of God in this barren world and for our shepherd to hear and guide us wisely in this time of our need for direction in matters of our church and presence in this community for ministry in his name. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For your beloved sheep, precious in your name, to draw them ever closer amid trials and adversity. Judy, Joyce, her daughter Ginger, Marjorie and son Drew, Linda and Lee, Shirley, Emily, Marg, Phyllis, Myrna and Gabriel, Elsie and Oliver and Aaliyah, Fern, Richard, Brad, Audrey H and Audrey M, Val and her brother Kelvin, Rita and Jack, Renee, Eva and Pastor Jonathan, Carol, Rita T, Howard and Hannah, Reinhold, Randy and Gail, Pastor Les, Christina, our brothers and sisters in faith in Ukraine, our local families dealing with the losses of fire and destruction, and these we name before the Lord now, silently or aloud. I pray for my wife, Linda Louise Council. I pray for myself, Larry Council, that I put my vengeance and my anger upon the Lord Jesus Christ, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, as I will be surrendering myself to the public guardian trustee for a period of time, that you will give me the strength and the wisdom to be able to handle this decision in the best way that can be done. And I'm hoping that also that uh, Eva Diener uh, is doing well over in Ontario and with her family. Dear Lord, I ask you to be with my brother Kelvin and his diabetes with Gary Gabriel's control at this time, and the doctor has put him on new medication. I ask, dear Lord, that you would work over his body to make this medication work to your will. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For all who commune, that faith may be strengthened and love renewed, until at last we feast with all the saints in his everlasting presence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. Merciful Lord, you sing the song of your love over the vineyard of your church. Lift her united voice through your spirit, that she in turn would freely praise your lavish grace and proclaim your salvation beyond her walls. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the same Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The congregation, please stand and we can join them in what shall I render to the Lord. What shall I render to the Lord for all his blessings? give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who, out of love for his fallen creation, humbled himself by taking on the form of a servant, becoming obedient unto death, even death upon a cross. Risen from the dead, he has freed us from eternal death and given us life everlasting. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. 
gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
true body and blood of your Lord Jesus keep and preserve you in the true faith to life eternal. Go in his peace. And the congregation may now stand as you're able as we continue and join in the post-communion canticle. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord and sing his praise. Tell everyone what he has done. Let all who seek the Lord rejoice and proudly bear his name. He recalls his promises and leads his people forth in joy with shouts of thanksgiving. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. The concluding hymn is, as we opened, I'll hail the power of Jesus' name. Now we sing verses 4 through 7.
The peace of the Lord be with you. Strengthen you always.